Canyonlands National Park preserves 527 square miles of colorful landscape that has eroded into countless canyons, mesas, arches, and buttes carved by the Colorado River and its tributaries. The park is divided into three main districts, which include Island in the Sky, The Needles, and the more remote, less visited Maze District. Our favorite campsites in the Maze District are Maze Overlook, The Golden Steps, and The Dollhouse. This time we headed for The Dollhouse, Site 2, my personal favorite in all Canyonlands. Tom and his brother Mike, who we affectionately refer to as Uncle Mike, headed out in Mike's Jeep ahead of me and Jackson. They were already camping and exploring in southern Utah and made it to the dollhouse earlier in the day. Jackson and I left Salt Lake Valley that morning. We headed through Spanish Fork Canyon and through a modern day cattle drive right on the highway. Then we headed through Hans Flat, which provided some incredible views, including these small and mesmerizing sand dunes. And across the flats, we could see the Henrys with sporadic, distant storms. The next section is the Flint Switchbacks, or Flint Steps, an incredible shelf road that zigzags its way from one plateau down to the level below. This time it was obvious that the road had been repaired and was smooth sailing all the way down. The views, however, did not disappoint. You can see the tight switchbacks and narrow shelf road looking down from above. When the road's in poor condition, and you have to climb out and four low with lockers on, picking and choosing your path. It's not for the faint of heart. This time, however, it was downright pleasant. And I was glad too, because the sun was falling fast and we had a long, tortuous path ahead of us. After coming down from the Flint switchbacks, we head south along an amazing shelf road for a few miles till we drop down to a plateau where there's a four-way intersection. Taking a left or a west at that four-way will lead you towards Teapot Rock, the wall, the chocolate this drops, Lizard Rock, and much more. Then eventually onto the dollhouse, our destination for the next couple of nights. Okay, that's good. You're real straight now. The driver. There you go. <laughs> no problem at all. Well done, Jackson. <laughs> yeah, we didn't plan for that one. We had to navigate the most technical parts of the trip in the dark, from Teapot Rock to the Dollhouse. It was fun and quite challenging. We had plenty of weather at the dollhouse, jumping under the awning to stay dry when it rained, coming back out to soak up the sun when it shined. We planned a short hike out to Spanish Bottom Overlook. While we were out, the skies opened up again. Jackson and I had our raincoats and our day packs. We also had Tom and Mike's, but we had hiked on ahead and were separated from them. When we found them, they were huddled under a slight overhang taking shelter. We gave them their jackets and quickly hiked to a better overhang for us to ride out the storm. Yeah, watch, watch. Whoa! <laughs> My binoculars. How do you do that with a yeah. selfie video? Oh, okay, selfie video. Selfie video. <laughs> 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 hey, look at the guy from California with the duck face. <laughs> we hiked on back to camp, and when we arrived, we were surprised to find more than just some wet gear. Oh, the devastation. It's gonna take major surgery to fix that. Look at the devastation, Jackson. We quickly recovered. Jackson and I grilled up some delicious ribeyes for dinner. And then we sat around the fire and told fish stories for the rest of the evening. That morning, I woke up early and went on a short hike to get some good views of the sunrise. And it was glorious. 
There's truly nothing like a southern Utah sunrise. Looking east over the Colorado River Gorge, with the Needles District and the Abajo Mountains in the background, truly breathtaking. We had a nice, relaxing morning. Cooked up some breakfast and leisurely packed up camp. Then we headed out on the long four-wheel drive road connecting the maze to the rest of the world. We headed out the southern route, turning south at the four-way, eventually exiting onto Highway 24, just north of Height. We worked our way up to Hanksville, where we met up with Tom and Mike again, to fuel up and share one last meal together at the amazing Duke's Slip Rock Grill, one of our longtime favorites. We then headed our separate ways, Jackson and I up towards Fish Lake, and Tom and Mike on their way home. Mike still had to drive all the way back to San Jose, California. As we pulled into Fish Lake, Jax and I were both stunned by the stark contrast of the deep green pines and the aspens, who were engaging in their yearly ritual of beautifying the landscape with a temporary, vibrant color change before dropping their leaves for winter. We camped just off the highway at Paiute Campground, a bit northeast of Fish Lake overlooking the Johnson Valley Reservoir. What a lovely morning. Sunshine, warm fire, delicious, real bricky. The aspens were turning magnificent yellow, orange, and red colors, the yellow dominating. The Pando Aspen Grove surrounding Fish Lake is the largest aspen clone and the most massive single living thing known on Earth. We continued heading north on a portion of Skyline Drive that we missed on our last trip due to problems with Mr. Anderson. The views continued to amaze us around every corner. I'm grateful I could capture some of this beauty on camera so I could share it with all of you. Thanks for joining us on another incredible adventure. Until next time, make everything an adventure.